fundraising has been absolutely epic for President Trump and for the RNC. Off the hook. Absolutely. Yeah. And fundraising is how you win campaigns. So for people who are wondering how this whole process works, as somebody who ran for a, an election, you can't power a campaign and election very well if you don't have money. I know that we have some of these outlier stories like the trucker in New York or New Jersey who won uh, buying pizza or donuts. Remember that story from a couple years ago when he got a seat in the state legislature? But usually the way that you win a campaign is you've got to have money to do things like pay for your ads and pay for marketing. You got to pay for the mail that goes out. You've got to pay for the events that you have, like the rallies we see President Trump going to. And that stuff costs. And it really relies on the power of donors. And the real effectiveness of a campaign is measured by what we call the small donors, not by the the packs that come in or the dark money that comes in, but by the power of the grassroots donor, because that shows the actual support a candidate has. So for the month of May, Trump and the RNC broke fundraising records for a month and raised over $140 million. And a lot of that came in right at the end because of the trial. And you were just telling me some new numbers. Yeah. So Fox was reporting uh, that as of the verdict, um, he's actually raised over two hundred million dollars now since the beginning of June. Yeah, since the beginning the of June. Yeah, and, and the, since the beginning of June. Uh, since uh, yeah, since the verdict up to now, uh, beginning of June, over two hundred million dollars. Over two hundred million dollars. That's more than any other candidate for office in history. That's has, amazing. Has raised and in that same amount of time. I read something like. Is it 20, 23 percent of the people who've been donating? 30 percent. Are small donors. And then how many of them are new donors? No, 30 uh, percent of those of those small donations were first time donors to the Trump, just, Trump to a Trump campaign. That is mind blowing. Yep. So you'll read online, especially from outlets that are against President Trump that he's losing support, all these people, you know, this money percentage would say they wouldn't vote for him again. However, the fundraising number shows something completely different. If you've got that many people who've never donated to a political candidate before, putting their money where their mouth is, that that's a vote. And not only that, but the way that we think of it in the political world is that's also a circle of influence. That person is, in, is saying, not only am I going to put my money there, but that's now a public donation and I'm going public with my support. And so now I'm going to tell my family and my friends and I'm going to be an influencer for this campaign. So you've just made a little campaigner, if you will, out of that person who just donated. That's a really big deal. Another thing I think is positive is the change in public opinion. So we've seen that there's a little bit of a toss up in some of these seven swing states. The swing states are going to decide the election. I know every state matters. I'm a little bit partial to the state of Alaska for those who know me. However, in this particular race in 2024, the reality is the seven swing states are going to decide this election. Nikki Chewbacca, what are those seven swing states? <laughs> those, swag, those seven swing states, Kelly Chewbacca, uh, include Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, North Carolina, Nevada, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. Previously, we had some on there like Ohio and others. But some of those states, Ohio, Florida, used to be swing states for those who have like a 20-year track record of being in politics. But they have now shifted. Ohio and Florida are solid Republican states now. And so these are the toss-up states this year that we're all watching for the presidential race. There are some congressional races like Alaska mm -hmm. that are actually your toss-up states. This is one of our top congressional seats for the toss-ups actually up here this year. But for the presidential race, it's in those seven states. So really, the only polls we need to watch are in those seven states. Well, I would also add, we're seeing some blue states that, that might be in play now. I mean, uh, New York is now, I mean, he has shrunk that lead to a single digit lead for Biden in right. New amazing. York, which is which is just like amazing. And then you've got Virginia, which may be in play now as well. Uh, so the race is starting to tighten and it likely, it likely will 
tighten more uh, as the summer progresses and people start paying attention, especially post uh, the GOP and Democrat uh, conventions. Well, and with the big Hunter Biden trial starting. So remember, it was the yep. it was Comey announcing that the investigation was continuing against Hillary Clinton that really shifted the outcome of the trial or the outcome of the uh, election between Trump and Hillary Clinton at the time. These whatever's the most recent thing on people's mind tends to affect the outcome of the election. And I, I don't think that the Hunter Biden trial is going to go well for the Biden family, nor do I think they're going to handle the questions or the public media around that very well. But I want to get back to the swing states. It turns out for those who care about these numbers in all seven swing states, as of this week, Trump is leading in those seven swing states. So don't believe the negative media from the fake news outlets that want to tell you Trump's in jeopardy, he should fold, he should quit, he should yield to a better candidate without baggage, whatever all of that is. It's all just some of that inflammatory news to try and stir up and divide Americans. The fact is Trump is leading in all seven states, all seven states, which is a complete flip from just a couple years ago. That's a big deal. Yep. And I mean, the 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 race is still probably going to be tight. Right. We know like totally. he, right now he's about one point ahead of Biden overall, which, again, is pretty is pretty big. So it's it's going to come down, at least at this point, to less than 60,000 votes, potentially in those states, in those states. So uh, we've still got our work cut out for us, uh, for those who support Trump and quite frankly, for those who support a better America going forward, making America great again. And you know what? That's not people associate that uh, or have in the past with, you know, something evil or something awful. But that's another piece that we're seeing positive coming out of this trial is folks who might have called themselves never Trumpers um, are now realizing that this is bigger than President Trump. And he has said this himself, that this is bigger than him. Um, everything that that the Biden administration has done to to basically uh, erode our institutions in these last uh, three and a half years um, is impacting Americans in such tragic and difficult ways that people are finally realizing, you know what? We want America to be great again because when America's great, we're doing great. <laughs> this isn't about uh, some sort of evil genius who's trying to hurt our country. Uh, this is about a, a leader who is strong, who loves our country, who believes that our best years can be ahead of us, and who has put himself in front of the metaphorical firing squad uh, for Americans, for this country, to push us into and to lead us into a better and brighter future. And Americans are uh, increasingly uh, coalescing around that truth, that reality, and I think we're going to continue to see increased momentum behind the president. Well, I think that increased momentum will also help us with down ballot races. So the presidential yeah. race is not the only race in play this election cycle. And as you're saying, this really is not about President Trump. This really is about the direction of America. And are we going to swing to this far left progressive agenda that is taking us down this socialist, communist kind of blended society that is really eroding everything that America stands for? Or are we going to swing back to something that really stands on our values as an American society where this government is actually led by the people and not by institutions partnering with big tech and social media to tell us what to think and how to think and why to think and then controlling us and controlling our pocketbooks. And instead, we tell them who's actually in charge here. And instead, the power is in community engagement and individual empowerment. That momentum, I think, that this this trial and these convictions has kind of caused an awakening for a lot of Americans to go, wait a minute, I need to be involved. I need to do something. I think that could be very positive for our congressional races, for our local races, and very beneficial for like the trajectory going forward. And so I'm very hopeful, actually, that we will see really um, good-hearted American candidates being elected in all jurisdictions and all states across the country to really set us back into a balanced path going forward. That, that momentum, I think, is really, really good. And I think that that's what our worldview for our audience, that's what our worldview really leads us towards. We really believe in a positive worldview, not one that's like, let's just give up, let's just surrender, let's just quit, let's throw in the towel, or let's no. get hostile, let's get angry, 
Instead, if we're going to have hope, it's got to be a perseverant hope. It's got to be based in something. But my worldview is based on the story of the gospel. And I really believe that after really, really horrible things happen, where people thought it was the end of the story on Good Friday, that God brought back our resurrection story. That's what I believe. I believe that really great things can happen after really, really bad things. And that's what I believe can happen here. I believe that instead of giving up hope and going back to doing whatever we could do, our worldview says that really good things can happen after really bad things. And that's what we're going to hope for because God can do great things. Yeah, cynicism is not going to help us. That's right. Um, And defeatism also isn't going to help us. Um, but I love how Laura Ingram has put it on her show. She has said, don't get mad, get motivated. And I think that's a, that's a great way uh, to put it for, for all of us. It's uh, going forward, we say we're not going to become cynical. We're going to still be hopeful, and we are now motivated to uh, support the president and support uh, the, um, the vision we have for a free, democratic United States of America going forward. That isn't what uh, the Democrats, uh, the more darker vision that the, the leftists and the Democratic Party are trying to put forward for us. 